Hello. In recent years, we've seen a lot of really fun work using synthetic data for computer vision and for robotics. For example, I did some work on pose estimation only using synthetic data, getting really good results. But one of the problems that we've seen is that it's really complicated to use a synthetic data generator such as Unreal Engine uh, and put them in the hands of a researcher, right? Because it's such a different ecosystem from what we researchers are used to use. So think of using Python, for example. Here, I want to talk to you about our most recent renderer that we created, Invisi. Invisi is a Python-based renderer. We did some work to integrate this renderer inside the ecosystem that Python is. It uses optics as a backend in order to get really good performances for leveraging the GPUs to get really crisp images. You can see some of examples right now that as I'm speaking, they're sort of popping up around me. In general, Invisi is very simple to install, very simple to use, and it can produce really astonishing results, allowing you to explore the world of synthetic data in your work, or even just generating really cool figures for anything you would like to do. In this clip, I would really like to sort of look into how to code a simple example in Invisi, how to install it, how to get some results out of the door and how to leverage the examples and the documentation that we have. So you guys can also create some really cool pictures. So let's start by installing Invisi. Uh, Invisi is very simple to install, just pip install Invisi. Uh, we do require you to have the newest driver for Nvidia and have a GPU. You can use any GPU, it doesn't have to be an RTX card, but with a beefy RTX card, rendering is a lot faster. So let's just create a simple file. We're gonna import Invisi. Uh, Invisi is all written in C++, so we're kind of calling the API for uh, through Python interface. So we're gonna start by initializing our, our world. There's a typo there, I'll fix it later. Everything in Invisi is an entity. What I mean is every time you create something you want to render or modify or move around, it has to be an entity. Then you're going to apply to that entity different components. For example, here we're creating an entity called camera, and then we're going to create a camera component telling Invisi that this is going to be a camera. There are other components that you can create, transform being one. It represents where the object is going to be in 3D. Uh, here I'm creating the camera uh, component to attach to our entity camera. And that camera component is just telling Invisi the different uh, parameters it needs to use in order to be able to render from that specific camera. So I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to give it a field of view. The camera naming or the, the naming as you can see here are the different components and entity. They don't share the namespace, but within a component, they share a, name, a namespace. Everything has to be unique within that component. So a transform, if I create a transform camera, there's only one transform camera in the whole Invisi that can exist. On line 15, I'm gonna set the camera entity to say the camera. So we cannot render multiple cameras at the same time, but you could loop over multiple cameras that you have in order to uh, render, let's say, a stereo uh, pairs, or you could move the camera as well if you wanted to do that. I'm going to use this really useful function look at. So I'm going to tell it uh, camera is going to be looking at 0, 0, 0, the up vector of the camera is 0, 0, 1, and then the I, meaning the position of the camera is going to be 1, 1, 1. As I'm going to fix the different typos that I had in order for the script to run, I want to talk a little bit about the components. As you can see here, um, the transform component created on line 7 was directly created, but I didn't have uh, a handle for that specific component. So if I wanted to change the transform, I need to be able to access it somehow. As you can see, line 17, I say camera.getTransform. So you could also do camera.getCamera to get the component camera. So now that I fixed some of my typos, uh, let's look at how we can render that image. I'm gonna use this infinite loop in order to get the rendering screen open and running. And now we have our first Hello World in Invisi. Very exciting. But is it really exciting? Let's try to add some geometries in there. I'm gonna create a sphere again. It's an entity. 
I'm going to give it a name. So to get things a little running differently, I'm going to create the entity, but I'm not going to create inside the constructor any of the components. I'm going to create them outside that constructor. So sphere, I'm going to go in and set a mesh inside that sphere. So Invisi comes with a bunch of predefined geometries that you can use. In this context, I'm going to use uh, create sphere. You could look at the documentation to see other geometries you could create using our interface, but you could also import OBJ files or GLB files or any files really, because you could even pipe information in Invisi from raw data that you're loading through, let's say the Python interface, for example, which is really useful because Python has this really rich ecosystem for you to build on top of. And here I'm going to attach my transform to my sphere. I'm going to put the sphere right in the middle of the scene. By not passing any arguments to set transform, everything is going to be at zero, zero, so I can just skip. So materials are really important when you're doing ray tracing. They're going to define how light is going to travel when it's going to hit the surface of any geometry. Uh, more specifically, I'm going to return to materials and ha run a little demo for you guys so we can really explore that. For now, we're going to use the materials in order to define a color. So let's look at how I could also get a handle for the material of the sphere. So right now I didn't get a handle when I created that material, but what I could do is I can search for every material that are available inside Invisi or that were created as components. As you can see, I did in nv.material.get and then I passed in the string that was used to create that material more specifically on line 35. So now I'm going to apply a color to the material. Uh, so for now, we're just going to keep it really simple. We're just going to create this like bluish color for that material. There's a typo here on line 23. Sphere should be a string, not a handle or an object. Uh, it looks a little flat. So I think we're going to spend a little time here to kind of add a light here, for example, that might be quite interesting. So like we did before, we're going to create an entity. We're going to attach some components. So we're going to attach a transform components and then a light component. There are different ways to create a light in Invisi. Right now we're creating a point light. So we're just going to create an entity. We're going to create a component light and we're going to create a component transform as well. You could also use a mesh component here, and then Visi will use the mesh and the normals of that mesh to emit light in these different directions, uh, creating, let's say, for example, a sun, or if you wanted to have a surface that emits light everywhere. So I skipped a little bit here. Uh, I want to see how we can control the light uh, source in order to change the temperature of the light and change its intensi intensity. So here we're going to go get the light through the Invisi component search and then using that we're going to use the we're all going to look into finding how to set the temperature and then how to set the intensity so the temperature refers to how yellow to blue the light is going to be so the lower the value it is the yellow it is or the yellower it is and then the higher it is the bluer it is and using the intensity we're going to create how strong that light is going to be I'm um, noticing that the light position here is not that great, so I'm going to move it a little bit to get a little bit more of a nice shading effect on our sphere. And now you have it. This is a more complete uh, example. But in most cases for machine learning, deep learning, computer vision, and so forth, or robotics, we would prefer to render these images headless. Like the, we're running a script on the server and all the images are getting dumped into a file. Uh, Invisi allows you to do that in the Invisi initialization step. Uh, you can pass headless equal true. And then we're going to call this function nv.render to file. We're going to pass the width uh, of the image that we want. We're going to pass the height of the image. And then we're going to pass sample per pixel. Sample per pixel is how many rays are we going to throw per pixel. And that has a huge impact on the quality of the images that we're going to generate. The higher that number is, the nicer the image is going to look like. And we're going to run a little bit of an example here. So let's look at running 100 sample per pixel. You can see there's a little bit of pepper onto that image. There's a little bit of noise. Uh, something that we could do is increase the number of sample per pixel to get kind of rid, rid of that. 
So we're gonna run a thousand sample per pixels. As you can see, it's a lot smoother now, but it took a little longer to render. I kind of skipped that bit for, for us. Um, given the new research and development in ray tracing, we could also use a denoiser. Denoiser takes as input an image with some pepper pattern that you saw, and it kind of denoises it and tries to make a really smooth image, as you can see here. So we're kind of keeping the computation down and then leveraging some third party to get that noise level back down uh, and being able to get a really nice sharp image with lesser sample per pixel. So this was our example here for how to use Invisi and how we can use different components, entities, bring them together to generate some images. And so let's look at some examples that are part of the Invisi GitHub examples. Uh, so here I'm going to just go and install the different requirements. There's also a download content script that you need to run in order to be able to run all of these uh, examples. So let's look at example 17. When I started using ray tracing, I was really confused by the materials. We're using Disney BRDF here. Uh, there's a subset of these BRDF here being put. There's transmission, roughness, uh, metallic, uh, and specular and sheen, and then the rest are kind of hard to understand what they actually achieve. The one that is the most important are the roughness and the metallic. So let's remove the specular. You can see now we have a pretty matte object. And then transmission is just going to create a, uh, a transparent object, like a, a glass. For example, you can see now through the teapot and then kind of creating these optical uh, effects. So let's remove the transmission. Let's go play around with the uh, roughness, hopefully. Uh, not the right roughness, the other roughness. Thank you. So that roughness uh, sort of makes it more polished, less polished. So you see there's a bit of shiny when it's at zero. When it's at one, there's no shininess to the teapot. And then if we play around with uh, metallic, then metallic is going to create that shiny objects like right so it kind of mirrors when you have metallic at one then you get this really really shiny object and then you can also create uh, you can mix and match match them so if i add a little bit of roughness it's kind of a, a brushed uh, metallic object and then you can play with sheen and specular to get some other effects but really if you're playing around with roughness and metallic it kind of covers like 90 percent of the different ways you would want to play around with the materials, um, obviously graphics people wouldn't be happy with what I just said, so I'm sorry. So as a kind of a last one, this is a new feature we added recently. We can deal with volumes, as you can see here. Uh, we have this bunny, it kind of acts like a cloud. Uh, it's kind of transparent, allows light to go through, but not always. This is extremely fun to play with if you ever want to do that. So that's the end of my little demo. Uh, Overall, we're really excited about Invisi and what it allows users to do. It is simple to install, it is simple to use. Uh, there's a great API for you to look into if you want to do different things that I haven't covered in this video. I really hope that you're going to give it a try to figuring out how you can mix your robotics work, your computer vision work, or anything with this really powerful tool. Thank you so much for your time. Hopefully, you're going to have a uh, great rest of your day.